Hello and welcome. Amigos, I'm about to show you how to make a brisket in your oven. Listen, I know we don't all have a grill, so we're gonna keep the same delicious flavor, but we're gonna make it in our oven. It's gonna be equally as delicious. I'm gonna show you my tricks and you know, my style of making this so that you can achieve those delicious burnt ends. And when you slice into your brisket, you get that nice, delicious, juicy bite that we all love. And it's not necessarily a brine, I call it a Texas tea. So if you guys are interested and wanna see why I love Texas so much, keep watching. <laughs> Friends, I'm introducing you to our six and a half pound brisket. I'm gonna turn it over because we have to trim some of this fat, okay? Not all of it, but we have to get pretty, pretty close. So let's start. I know some of you are gonna wanna throw this fat, but if you like chicharrones, don't. Sorry, I can't focus with all the smells of the, of the spices. The spices? <laughs> So just hang in there, friends, while we start trimming most of this fat off, okay? I like to keep about half an inch to an inch because everyone, um, you're going to get a different cut every time, and it's not always going to be the same amount of fat. So just take your time trimming your fat because we do need some of that fat for flavor. And see, I get more fat on these outsides, and right here they did a pretty good job. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me. You see that thin? Fat, we're okay with that, and we just need to go thinner on this way throughout. Okay. We have a butcher that wants to give me pro tips. Bring it. We do. <laughs> we have a, a few on the channel. I hope they come in here and help me out because this is kind of what I have to do. You know, I'm not a butcher. I don't have interest in butching. <laughs> you don't have those skills, you mean? Um, I don't think I want to do those skills. Oh, okay. The only thing I want to do is be like Rocky, you know, when he's in there. Really well. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> a lot of butchers, it's like a generational, it's it's handed down to like gener from generation to generation, which is kind of cool. It's they a keep craft. Their, yeah, they keep their, their tradition, I guess. I um, like that. I appreciate you, butchers. Well, you know what? This flap is just hanging over, so I'm just going to slice it off. I notice that sometimes you get a flap, sometimes you don't. But that little extra meat we have there is great for our chicharrones. If you guys have been with me for a while, you know that I've made a variety of fresh, fresh chicharrones. I'm really loving this knife. Thank you, Cloud. You're welcome. Is that Aladdin or the genie? This is Aladdin, honey. Oh, okay. Cloud got me a set of knives, and those of you that know me know that I need my appliances, the things that I use often, like my... Instant Pot is Instapot. <laughs> you guys got a kick out of that. But it's not like the bouillon, okay? The things I do to impress my man, guys. Can you believe I learned how to make brisket for my man? <laughs> El Tejano. El Tex. Mm -hmm. It's funny because when I met him, he was like, when I'm older, I'm going to have my rocking chair and I'm just going to hang out on the porch. Watching my grandkids. Oh, seeing life, gosh. you know? It's beautiful. Yeah. That's his dream. That's simple, huh? I had a similar dream that was like that. Really? That's why, that's why we're so, uh, we're all so close. Mm -hmm. But mine includes uh, a book. <laughs> I wonder how many of you are going to butcher me in the comments because of my cutting styles for this. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for all the friends that are not used to our chit chat. It's just, it's brisket, it's family time, and... That's what we do in your family now. Okay, I've trimmed the brisket, but I have these chicharrones. If you want to learn how to make some quick, easy chicharrones, like tacos, let me know in the comments and we'll get it done with you guys. It's super easy, it's a quick meal, and it's really affordable, you know? You get two meals with one. I love that. Now we're gonna prepare somewhat of a brine, okay? Because we need some liquid to brush over our brisket so that we can stick all those delicious seasonings. Start off with some soy sauce some Worcestershire sauce. This is a liquid smoke I'm using. Take it light. I'm using the apple, but you have two choices. It depends on what you want to make. But for me, I'm going to use the apple today. And if you're going to be making it outside, you don't need this, okay? This is just because we're making it in our home. We're not in the doghouse. We're not doing it outside. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> what do you mean not yet? Depends how your brisket comes out. Oh, I don't think so, guys. What am I going to do with Cloud? <laughs> 
Now we're going to add our liquid smoke, water. I'm going to be using pink curing salt because that's going to help us achieve a nice ring and kind of fool us that we did it outside, you know? But you don't have to have this, but if you're looking for that ring to trick folks, add it. You mean to impress them? You got to trick some people, okay, that mm -hmm. I grilled cannot, it outside. I can't be fooled. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> Apple cider vinegar, brown sugar, azúcar. Okay, I'm really excited if you guys haven't noticed. And I have ground celery seeds. If you don't grind them, they might burn a little bit. That's why I like to make them nice and smooth and break them down. Now you're going to add your yellow mustard. Once you've combined your ingredients, it's time to go over our spices. I'm going to go over the spices quickly, but you can look in the description box for the exact measurements. We have garlic powder, onion powder, uh, ginger powder, chili powder, smoked paprika, chicken bouillon, cumin, and black pepper. Mix all your spices. And surprisingly, even if you just use salt and black pepper, a little bit of brown sugar, if you like the sweetness, you're gonna be just fine. And that's what I love about a Texas style brisket that, you know, our Texas friends are not scared to use black pepper. And I love that. I love black pepper too. All right, we're done here. Let's go ahead and brush our brisket. With our Texas tea, our wannabe brine. <laughs> what do you mean wannabe? It is a brine. Well, yeah, if you want to brine it, you can just pour it all into a container, but this is just for brushing for me, so it's, it's a Texas tea. It's, don't confuse it with, this, with the sweet tea from Texas. I don't, that's but that's... Bomb. Ooh. That strawberry Texas sweet tea? Oh, my goodness. Girl, I had a boyfriend that told me, my first Texan boyfriend, and he said, I'm going to make you some... Texas style tea because he was drinking my mom's tea. He's like, that's not tea. <laughs> also a Korean American man. <laughs> no, we didn't. We didn't need a, a, an announcement for that. We already knew. <laughs> well, he was he was really talented, girl. He knew how to like weld. He won like a little uh, Mr. Texas for welding. All these wonderful things, right? But he made me some Texas tea, and I thought my teeth were gonna fall out. <laughs> That's how you know the tea is it's good. It's good. <laughs> and then after, I'm like, can you make me more? <laughs> the best. Okay. It smells so fragrant in here. Right? It smells, it smells so amazing. good. I think soy sauce is always such a good uh, combo with the Worcestershire. That's yeah, just the blend of the spices are right under my nose. Yeah. No, I didn't mean that in a bad way. You're like, yeah, like mm -hmm. I lost something. <laughs> no, I, I'm happy. I'm engaging you. Yay. I get excited, you know, to hear other people talk about food. Mm -hmm. I think that's why I'm so tight-lipped when I say things. Because I like to hear how other people see food. Because I already know how it feels. <laughs> how good it feels to talk yeah. about food. Yeah. It does. So once you brush your brisket with the Texas tea, you're going to let it set here for about 10 minutes, okay? I want it to get nice and... You know, a little tacky. It's not going to be overly tacky, but just enough to start absorbing so that when we lay our seasoning on here, it sticks. Oh, okay. All right, so I'll see you guys in about 10 minutes. To our brisket, we're going to begin to season it with the fat side up, okay? So I'm going to begin sprinkling. That's how I sleep. What? With the fat side up. <laughs> Girl, I wasn't expecting that. Sorry. Sorry, you guys. I had a long day today. <laughs> Tap and then move it, like once it soaks up, okay? Tap and move it along. Want to build a good, good crust. I'm going to place it in my dish when I turn it over and I'm going to continue to season it on my dish, okay? Got it. So I don't want to be moving it around once I've already placed it there. 
smells so good in here. I had some seasoning on my board, so I just scraped it. You want to show them, Cloud? Sure. I just scraped it, picked it up, nice and sticky, smooth. Okay, friends, we are done. I'm going to be placing this in the refrigerator for 12 to 14 hours, okay? The brisket has been resting in the refrigerator for 14 hours. I lifted it up and I placed it in this little rack, okay? But what I'm gonna show you guys right now is that we have the fat side at the top, okay? So when you're placing it in your baking dish, make sure that the fat side is on the top. And this little rack, I it came with the purchase I made for this uh, baking roasting pan. So now that we have this set, I'm gonna go ahead and place a foil nicely over it. I'm already excited just to see the foil because you know if you've ever been to a really delicious like homey style barbecue place, you see the trays with foil. It just makes me happy. <laughs> now it's time to place it in our oven. Make sure to look in the description box for your uh, cooking time. We have one hour left of cooking time. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the foil off. I'm gonna raise the temperature just so that we can continue to uh, cook our brisket and we get that nice coating that we all love from a brisket. Okay friends, our brisket is ready. The last three minutes of the remaining cook time, I added a few cubes of butter. I put the broiler on high. You gotta keep an eye on it so that we can get that last initial crisp and also get that butter to shine on the top. Those little bubblies you see is the butter. I'm gonna let this rest for about 15, 20 minutes before we can slice into it. It's a slight cover, it's not that tight, okay? Just to keep it nice and warm. I'm gonna cut it from both angles so you guys can see the one that has a little bit more fat, how it comes out juicier. So it just depends on what sides you cut it. Like if you cut the bigger part that has all that lining of fat, you're gonna get that, <laughs> that juiciness. That beautiful pink yeah. color. Oh and do you see this big old ring? That is from leaving it a long time. So if you guys leave it the 24 hours, you're gonna get that inner ring to be all solid pink throughout. And that's from uh, from our salt, our curing salt. Who's ready for a taste? We both are. Okay, let's try it. Amigos, this closing is going out with a lot of love and a lot of heart for all the Views Club Junior, especially Andrea and her little daughter. Oh my goodness, I was in tears today when I watched this video clip. If you guys are interested, you can follow us on Instagram. We also have Facebook and on Twitter, we are The Real Views on the Road. So on that one, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Adios! Just keep it coming. Oh my goodness, the parts that have the fat <laughs> are so good. So whether you like the fat part or not, it's good. Hold on, let me get a little bit of this pickled up. Carrot. Oh, that snack is amazing too. I get a spoon. <laughs> So for my pickle side, I like to have these carrots. All it has is salt, pepper, and lemon. And I slice them with a potato peeler. And these are a great snack. So I like onions and pickle and bread on the side. I do too, girl. <laughs> when I sit down in Texas, I have huge, big love for Texas. Watch out if you guys see me eat barbecue there. 
I've had a lot of <laughs> close to life and death experiences at us. Seriously. <laughs> I think my favorite barbecue places has got to be. Don't say them. List them below, you guys. We'll tell you if you agree. <laughs> I won't tell you guys yet until I take you to eat there. Oh my goodness. You guys, this is just going to keep going down. So I hope you guys enjoy this as much as I do. You see the crust right there? It's nice and crusty. It's not like soft. It's, it's like a crisp. It's so good. And then this part soft. And I'm going to show you the other end of the brisket that's a little bit more cooked. Mm -hmm. So make sure you look in the description box so that I can give you a lot of details for your brisket in your oven. Perfect. Mm. You guys need sides for this. I'm going to link my macaroni and cheese, my pasta salad, the mango salsa. I can't hold this camera any longer with that one. She wants. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> Through my door, was there my own heartbeat?